coming to you today from the frozen tundra of Georgia. It suddenly became 30 and 40 degrees outside in October. That's ridiculous. I need to move to Florida or something because if you've watched any of my videos, you know I hate the cold. Today, let's talk about the C4 Corvette Bose radio, uh, specifically the one in mine in the 1991 model. It sucks. And just understand that it's a terrible execution to a mediocre idea. One of the biggest questions that you see on the internet is how do you replace the Bose system without buying Bose components or sending it back to Bose for repair or whatever. And it's actually a lot easier than I anticipated. I took a lot of video on replacing my Bose system with a regular uh, stereo system and most of my video came out without having any audio or something messed up, bad lighting, whatever. Most of the video is trash, some of it's not, so I'll show you some of it. But, uh, but before we do that, let's go through how much I spent on replacing my Bose system with what I feel is an even better system. When I say replace, I kept some of the Bose components, and we'll talk a little bit about that. You can go as expensive or as cheap as you want. Uh, I obviously go for the more budget-friendly options. It's a good way of saying I'm cheap. What I did was, first, uh, I wanted to find a decent head unit. Of course, it's a double-den head unit, which means it's the bigger head unit. Uh, I didn't want a touch screen uh, because I didn't want to spend the money on a good touch screen, and there's horror stories out there about the cheaper touch screen. So I bought a Pioneer head unit that is a non-touch screen. I'll show you a picture of that here in a minute. It does have Bluetooth, uh, hands-free technology for talking on your phone. Uh, it does have auxiliary hookups. It does have a USB port. Uh, so it has all the creature comforts of modern radio. Uh, I did some, some looking around. I found it on a website called VIPoutlet.com that uh, for $50. Now this is a $100 head unit at Walmart anyway, so $50 is unreasonable and it's, and it's perfect. Now what I chose to do was to utilize an, an amp to push all the speakers. And I, we'll talk a little bit about that later, but the reason was I wanted to run RCA cables from the back of the radio uh, instead of running new speaker wires to each corner. Now I'm gonna have to run speaker wires eventually anyway, but I wanted to go ahead and run an app because I just like the idea of a dedicated app. I believe running the uh, RCA cables was a little bit easier because I didn't have to worry about running as many wires through the dash. So I did buy an 800 watt uh, dual amplifier. It's a four channel amp. Uh, you will need a four channel amp if you're gonna do it the way I did it. This is a two ohm or four ohm amp. It's just a good, solid, uh, well-constructed, cheap, Amp. It's normally about a hundred, hundred twenty dollar amp. I got it for uh, fifty five dollars on Amazon warehouse deals. It looks good. It uh, it functions perfectly. It has built in crossovers. It has uh, all the has all the gain adjustments and everything uh, that you would need. And if I ever expand out to a, a, a better system later on, this amp can come along with me for the ride. You'll notice I did spend some money on some four inch speakers. Those four inch speakers were because the front speakers in my car. Uh, one of them was non-existent where the previous owner had taken it out and I didn't want to build new speaker boxes or anything So I just went ahead and bought some cheap three-way four-inch speakers uh, For 20 bucks shipped uh, and they're they're really good. They're, they're really good speakers so far but Yeah, I didn't have to build new boxes I was able to pop them right into the place where the where the Bose speakers were a lot of people say Oh, well, you can't use those boxes with regular speakers. Wait, you can and it sounds fine Actually sounds pretty good because the airport still works the same way of course, I had to buy some speaker wire because you do have to run some new speaker wire. Uh, the speaker wire to the Bose stuff is, uh, is not made to uh, carry any real wattage. I had to buy an amp wiring kit, uh, and that's just a basically a, a long lead for the power, a uh, short lead for the ground. It has some other speaker wire and stuff in it, but realistically, I just needed those two pieces. If you don't already have them, I did already have them, but if you don't, you'll want to spend about five bucks on various connectors to connect the speaker wires to the new speakers. Um, and then, of course, I needed a Metra, that's the brand name, adapter kit uh, for the head unit. So I spent a total of $178. One thing I haven't addressed yet is the antenna. Uh, you would need a Chevrolet adapter and you would need a, a, a longer antenna lead. Wound up being about $20 worth. I'm not going to buy those. I'm going to wind up spending $20 on a hidden antenna. They're not quite as good as an as a external antenna. For what I'll use it for, it'll be perfect. So I will wind up with exactly $200 in replacing my entire Bose stereo. It, in my opinion, it sounds better than the Bose stereos I've heard. Now, one thing you'll see on here is I don't have rear speakers listed. Everywhere on the internet says you cannot use, reuse the Bose speakers. I did, I reused the Bose rear speakers in the original speaker enclosures, and they sound great. 
So I highly suggest if, if your speakers are good and it's just your amps are out and you get the right amp to push them, you can you reuse the regular speaker. Uh, as far as tools we'll need, uh, obviously various screwdrivers and things to take the dash apart, Phillips head screwdriver, uh, small torx bit. You'll need some wire strippers, obviously. Uh, you'll probably need, you'll see that I take the entire bow system out, including the um, remote module underneath the dash. <clears throat> if you're gonna do that, you don't have to do that, but if you're gonna do that, you're gonna need, uh, if you're a bigger guy and not very flexible, you're gonna probably wanna take your passenger side seat out to get under there. Uh, so you'll need a, a ratchet for that. Other than that, you don't need a lot of tools to do this. All right, now that we're inside the car, here's what I've got. Here's my Pioneer. Got uh, hands-free calling, uh, Bluetooth, uh, USB auxiliary. It's a 200 amp radio uh, with uh, four channel RCAs. Good solid head unit. You can see it fits pretty good. I think it looks good. I think it fits the car. The four inch speakers, I was able to keep my factory enclosures, which I like. And I haven't put the grills back on, but the Bose units, and of course the uh, carpet's still bunched up. Uh, the Bose units are in and good. There's the dual 800 watt amp. There's a spider that needs to die. I don't know if I got him or not. And then you can see I haven't cleaned up the wiring on the amp yet as, as much. I ran the RCAs uh, down underneath the storage compartments and out right here into the console, another console under this piece and back into the radio. So again, most of my video of the actual install uh, didn't turn out uh, for whatever reason. So I'll just go over that real quickly right now and try to explain as best I can uh, how to do this quickly. So this is heavy. Uh, essentially, there are two bolts back here underneath the uh, console. Uh, there's one in the cup holder. You remove those, then you uh, remove the gear shift lever, uh, pull it back in the neutral or I got it in drive actually. There's a snap ring. If you remove the top button, uh, just by prying on it, it'll pop up. There's a snap ring that you remove and you remove that. Once you get all that done, you would unplug these two lights from underneath it. You would unplug the cigarette lighter and then the trunk button. And then there are two bolts up here on the front uh, that get unscrewed, one here and one here. To remove the center section, there's a bolt up here, which you have to remove the vent for, which is the vent is two screws here and here. You remove that screw, you remove a screw off here to the side, uh, and then that will pop off as well. There may be, I may be missing a screw or two uh, because this car has been taken apart and put back together a lot. And I'm not sure uh, what screws might be missing uh, from there. Uh, everything just pops loose and then you've got the radio sitting here or the radio control unit sitting here There'll be four bolts holding it in you take those off the radio comes out And then there is these two plugs that you just pull a lever up and unplug and then it'll slide out Here's the original CDM you can see this one was trash uh, You pull the CDM out far enough to get a hold of these two plugs and unplug it. This isn't the CDM This is the head unit and this thing is heavy. I bet it weighs every bit of 10 pounds easy the new pioneer unit probably weighs two pounds once you unhook that you'll see this plastic piece in the back it'll have to be cut out for any normal size radio to fit there there may be some yellow boxes hooked to it or clipped to it those yellow boxes are a part of the um, supplemental restraint so you want to make sure those don't get damaged or unplugged or messed with just pull them loose from the clips and push them out of the way at that point the bow system is essentially disconnected and you can kind of leave it at that i went ahead and took the cdm unit out from underneath the dash i just didn't want it in the car anymore uh, and i was trying to remove as much as possible uh, so this is the cdm unit that's underneath the dash on the 91 model uh, it's underneath these storage compartments on the later models this thing's a pain in the butt to get to if you want to take this out for any reason you don't have to uh, to do what i'm doing but if you did there's connectors on both sides, and this is where your antenna connector comes in at as well. Right there. Once you disconnect all that, you can take it out. There's a little plastic tray that it sits on, and it's very hard to get to. You have to take some body, some uh, interior panels off on the side over here, and then drop this uh, kick panel, and, uh, and you can get to it. Barely. If you're big like me, you'll need to take this seat out to get to it. But you don't have to remove this to do what I did. I just didn't want it in the car anymore and went ahead and removed it. 
and I thought I was going to run a uh, extension to the antenna, so I was just going to go ahead and get it out of the way. Let's talk about wiring. So you can see the radio still on, yet I open my door. That's because I have a bad switch on the door. And these Corvettes are set up to where the radio stays on until you open the door or for 15 minutes. Uh, so it's going to stay on for 15 minutes. I need a new door switch to fix that, so ignore that. So wiring is, is very simple on these. This came with a, a, a wiring kit just for the radio, not for the car. Uh, I simply ran RCAs out of the back of this for the amp, uh, the for all four channels. And so I didn't have to worry about any of the speaker wire. So I bundled them up and pushed them out of the way. At that point, I had a ground and I grounded it to a screw I found under here that had metal contact. It has a constant power. Where this CDM box is, is also a small fuse block if you didn't know. That's where, you're, where's where another of your radio fuses are. There's also a constant fuse there. Uh, so I just ran that and spliced it into the constant that was going to that fuse block. Then there's an accessory wire, which is what tells the stereo to turn on and off with the key. I ran that to the radio fuse. If I went to another accessory fuse, then this would have automatically went off. But realistically, I do kind of like that feature. So I'm just going to get new uh, switches for the doors. So now I've ran a ground, a constant to, the, to that small fuse block underneath there, and then also the accessory switch to the radio fuse under there. Very simple, just use some inline splices. Then you have a, a blue remote wire, and that's the wire that tells anything else to come on. So if you wanted to keep your factory antenna, you would have to find the pink wire in the bundle that you unplugged from the back of the radio and you'll have to make sure that you splice the, the blue wire in with that pink wire because what will happen is when the radio gets power and says I'm on, it will send a signal through that wire to the, to the pink wire that controls the antenna and raised the antenna. That's also the wire you have to take to your amp. So you may have two wires spliced into that one. I just ran uh, that remote wire, uh, I spliced on a longer wire and it runs to my amp to tell my amp to come on. Once those are all hooked up and buttoned up, your radio is wired. If you wanted to not run an amp and run your speakers straight off of the radio, you'll have eight different wires for, for speakers, and you just run your speaker wires off of those to wherever you want to go. So that's the radio wiring. Let's talk about the amp wiring. So I haven't cleaned it up, but you can see that there are eight speaker wires, uh, or four pairs of speaker wires, coming off of the amp, and it's all labeled, and it goes to each corner of the car. All I did was run the back ones in, in behind there and, and up to the speakers on each side. And then the front ones go up there, down this where I haven't tucked that back in yet. And on the other side, the same place. Comes down this door sill behind this plastic panel, which comes off of two screws. It goes underneath this piece, which all comes off as one big piece with about four screws, I think. Maybe six, I can't remember. And then it goes down to the speaker. Very easy to hide in this car. Very short runs. Uh, you don't even have to take anything major apart. You have to run a heavy duty power wire uh, to your amp. This one is run with the speaker wire that goes to this side. Uh, and then of course this is the ground uh, for your amp and it's also heavy duty. Finding a, a ground on this fiberglass car was a little bit challenging. So what I found was there the mounting bolt for the hatch release is uh is probably one of the better ground points and so i went to that so when this is all done this amp will be sitting here you'll see most of these wires uh, will be tucked underneath this carpet and so you'll just see them go down into the ground there and then these uh will you'll see that much of that wire that's all you should be able to see now that power wire uh coming off the amp is fused it comes down this side underneath this panel and, and behind this plate right here, behind here is a grommet that's located right behind your battery that you do have wires going out to. So I just fished it through there. Didn't have to drill any special holes, didn't have to do anything, and then it hooked straight to the battery. So if you do all that, you have your radio uh, hooked up, you have your speakers now ran, and you have your amp hooked up. At that point, it should be as easy as turning it on. I can play on YouTube that they don't strike me for that you know we know sound good of course I do have the target top off so uh, it would obviously sound a little bit better with that top on 
Here's a right here. I think this this music might be right free. Let's see. mess with any of the settings as far as the equalizer settings on the radio or the gain realistically the gain or any other crossover settings on the amp <laughs> if I don't get struck on this video then uh, I would be shocked <laughs> try not to get struck but you get the idea it sounds in my opinion really good i've been in cars with a fully functional bose system i think it sounds just as good as a bose system uh, if you wanted to not run an amp <clears throat> you could replace your bose rear speakers and uh, run speaker wire instead of the rcas uh, so you do away with a 50 to 100 dollar amp and you add 50 to 100 dollar speakers you're around the same price anyway so realistically there's no reason you couldn't do this if you look for deals for under $200. Now the Bose is gone. Hallelujah. The Bose is gone. So hopefully this video shows you that yes, you too can get rid of your Bose system with just a little bit of, of know-how and a little bit of work. I know nothing about car audio except the basics. And I was able to make it work with uh, some front speakers, the original Bose rear speakers, and a two slash four ohm amplifier. If I had all the pieces all at once, it would have taken me about a day and a half. The last thing I'll cover, guys, is there is one more issue. When you do this, if you take the CDM box and all the bow stuff out, you might get that error. It's called a sys error. You can look online on how to fix that. That will You can live with that. It's not going to make your car not run well, but it could uh, cause your, your trip computers not to work. Or at least the range computers and it may frustrate you basically the wiring is looking for the unit and the unit's not there anymore so you have to fool it into thinking that the unit's there with a resistor there are ways to do it online uh, look those up it just involves going to radio shack or or ordering a small resistor online and uh, and then manipulating that resistor into a couple small little ports on what you unplug from the back of the edge unit very easy to do i just haven't done it but uh, i'm not going to worry about it right now so guys i hope this gives you some confidence in dealing with your situations in your car uh and maybe working up the courage to go ahead and dive into this <clears throat> if you have a 91 uh, or a, a mid to early 90s corvette you probably are so sick and tired of the delco bow system so guys thanks for watching give it a thumbs up please subscribe if you haven't already Stay tuned and have a great day.